All right. So guys, today I have a treat for you. This is one of my favorite people because she motivates me to be strong and one day my muscles will look like hers. <laughs> Yes, and I will be able to snatch like her. I still hate snatches, y'all. I still hate snatches, but that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> so let me introduce you to one of the most amazing people in this world, Dr. Brianne Shulman Brown, CrossFit coach, nutrition coach. She's a whole lot of stuff. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you for that amazing intro right there. <laughs> Yes, I um, have my hands on a lot of different things, and I absolutely love every single day of it. Um, yeah, I have CrossFit coach and nutrition coach and PT all mixed into one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. So I wanted to bring you on because I think you are phenomenal. Not only are you super motivating, I know for me and for a lot of other people, but you are a wealth of knowledge. And since I work a lot with moms and, you know, just women in general with pelvic health and a lot of women always talk about fitness and everybody's like, Ooh, CrossFit, what's that? You know, and why not have like one of the best talk to them? I mean, I could talk to them, obviously, but, you know, I like to defer to people who are better than myself. <laughs> I know good people. So, exactly. Um, yeah, so that being said, you know, for a lot of those people out there who are just wondering, like, what are all these crazy folks talking about? What is CrossFit? So, essentially, CrossFit is very um, functional movements, constantly varied, um, basically meaning Every day you go into a CrossFit gym, it's going to be different. Um, you're going to do different movements every day. Every day is going to challenge you. One day may be a real fast seven-minute workout. Another day may be a long, just kind of 40-minute, like, pacer-type workout. And so it just really keeps your body in a situation of flux where it never really knows what to expect. And so you, don't, so you get more gains than if you're just going to go to the gym and do the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. um, the other really cool thing about it is it truly is, if you think about it, it's functional fitness. If you're deadlifting, well, what do you have to do to pick up a box, the groceries, the laundry basket, things like that? You have to do essentially a deadlift. Um, what do you have to do to put anything up overhead? You're putting groceries away. You're putting towels and sheets away. You're putting anything, you know, even on a flight, you're putting stuff in the overhead bin. You have to get something from your shoulders to overhead. So that's any of your presses. Um, Essentially, anything we do in the CrossFit gym is a form of functional fitness. Um, you can even go to the extent of a muscle up for, like, you're being chased by a dog and have to jump over a fence. Well, it's the same motion, basically. It's like you grab onto it and you have to transition yourself to the top. So, really, everything you do, we can translate to our everyday life. Awesome. So for those moms who are, especially if you're chasing around a toddler and you've already got a newborn, you know, you're picking up the baby out of the crib or the playpen, especially if it's on the lowest setting, you know, you're picking kids up um, if they're on the floor and you're playing with them, you're picking up the laundry baskets, you know, you're playing with your kids and you're going, wee, and you're tossing them up and you're having a great time and you've just done push presses and you're like, I haven't done any workout. Well, you're walking around with a toddler and you just did. <laughs> yes. Um, so, I mean, anything, you know, sitting on the toilet, I tell people all the time, squatting is your best friend. All of us got to sit on the toilet, whether you want to talk about it or not, you still got <laughs> to do it. So you might as well squat. So that being said, I mean, you know, and that touches on my second point, how beneficial it is, uh, because it does work a lot of the movements that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And, um, and so like, with that being said, you know, what, what about those people who, you know, look on at the CrossFit gym and they say, but I can't do those things. I, you know, like they're lifting all this, this weight and they're doing all this. So tell us a little bit more about scaling movements and, and, you know, how we, how we do that, um, and kind of work our way up. Yeah. So that's the amazing thing with CrossFit. The one thing a lot of people don't understand is you can go in and scale anything. Um, so my mom, she's, well, I won't give out her age. She might not appreciate that. But uh, I got her into CrossFit about five years ago, and she came with me terrified because she didn't understand she could scale. And once she got in there, it's like, oh, I can do everything. So literally, 
first day you come, it's like we have different weights of barbells. We have um, the men's bar at 45, the women's at 35, and then what we call the baby bar at 15. And so a lot of times people are starting with that 15 pound barbell on a lot of movements um, and just doing an empty barbell because that's all they can do and that's the safe thing for them to do. Um, when we're doing things on the pull-up bar, it's like we use bands in order to make things easier so we can actually achieve the movement. Or if we can't do that, we'll do ring rows instead. Um, Push-ups we'll do from our knees. There's so We'll do step-ups instead of box jumps. So there's a lot of different ways. There's so many varied ways that we can modify things or scale things in order to um, adapt for the new CrossFitter, to adapt for the injured. Um, you know, if you have a bad shoulder and you just can't do certain motions, there's ways we can work around that as well. So we, it's really something that anyone can do. It's just a matter of, um, you know, overcoming that kind of initial fear and going in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great because and one of the reasons why I love CrossFit and why I recommend it to people, I get bored really quickly. So the fact that I don't know what's going on, I mean, coach posts, you know, the workouts or whatever, but truly, you know, you really don't know until you get in there. It's like, oh, this is going to be hard. Oh, you know what? That really wasn't that bad. But it's always something different. It's always something to keep you challenged, um, you know, and just really push you to, to the best and strongest that you can be. And so a lot of times, especially speaking specifically for moms out there, you're coming off the heels of childbirth. You've just had a baby, you've gone through birthing trauma. And when I say trauma, not to the extent of, of horrific, but you've essentially carried a child for nine months, your body's gone through changes, your tissues have gone through changes, you've labored, you've birthed this child, whether, you know, naturally, vaginally, or by a cesarean. And so your tissues are coming off of all of that. And so they've got to heal. And why I love CrossFit so much for moms is, you know, they don't, they don't have to go lifting 300 pounds, you know, just to feel like they've accomplished something. They can really just start from the beginning, no weight, low weight, and just progress um, as they can. So with regards to, um, and you talked about scaling the movements and um, different things, talk a little bit for about, we talk a lot about breathing as pelvic floor therapist. Um, and I know that you're very body in tune and, and stuff like that, an amazing coach. So tell us a little bit about postures and just movement in general. What are your thoughts on like, breathing and, and, and breath versus breath holding things like, you know, a lot of moms ask, should I use that belt? And I usually tell people, unless you're doing like a one rep max, you really don't need it. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on things like that? Yeah. Um, first off, just for that belt, you're exactly right. Unless you're doing working for a one rep max or a lot of, if we're like doing multiple lifts at like 90%, I might use it just because it's, that is getting heavy. But for the most part, avoid using the belts as much as possible. You don't really don't want that to be your crutch. Um, yeah, breathing is important in everything. <laughs> it's so easy as we get going to hold our breath. Um, I know a lot of people that like kind of get stuck in that breath holding pattern with wall balls and double unders, and um, just because it's so easy to like just concentrate on what you're doing and forget that you need to breathe. But once you really start to breathe, you realize your body just relaxes more, um, still under that same intensity. And so you can really do the same movement so much easier and so much more efficient mm -hmm. as you're moving. And so by establishing good breathing patterns and really establishing like diaphragmatic breathing, not just lung breathing, you can really, you know, help yourself have a stronger core, but also be more efficient with your movements. Absolutely. And we always say, um, compliments Julie Weeb because I love to give credit where credit is due. Um, blow before you go, you know, and and I was just having a conversation with someone and we were talking about the same thing. And I'm like, you know, if if you're lifting, if you're doing a squat, especially like an air squat, there is no need to breath hold. And when we think about, you know, all the kind of more technical and nuanced things, like things that moms have to deal with or may have to deal with, you know, the leaking or, you know, prolapse and stuff like that the fact that you're able to breathe through your movements helps you to really control that pressure and really help to engage your system more holistically than if you breath hold and then you've just got all that pressure more or less weighing onto your pelvic floor. 
So, I mean, they might not listen to it from me, but they'll listen to it from the best CrossFit coach there is. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what about, what about training and nutrition? So nutrition is huge for a number of factors. Um, whether you are just kind of getting into it and just wanting to get a good workout or you want to actually be a good, um, to the competitive athlete level, um, nutrition is such a huge element. Um, just for the person who wants to get a good workout, if we don't have a proper nutrition, you're not going to gain strength, which is ultimately why you're working out in order to gain strength. You can play with your kids, you can pick up those kids, you can pick up whatever's necessary in your whole day to day life. Um, but it's also to keep your energy up. If you don't have good nutrition, you don't have good hydration. Um, you're just not going to have good energy when you're working out. You're not going to have good energy during the day afterwards because you're just going to be um, depleted of all your calories essentially. And so having proper nutrition from a overall caloric intake is super important as we're um, going through our training. And also nutrient wise, we definitely want to make sure we're getting in good nutrients so we can replenish everything that we've lost. So we can, so we don't break down um, our muscles. And so we don't break down any of our tissues in this process of our training. Um, cause our whole purpose is to build up our bodies, not break it down. And that's huge. You are what you eat people. You are what you eat. What about, what about supplements? You know, a lot of people oftentimes think that because they're going into, um, the gym or a CrossFit space or something like that, that they must supplement. Like that's, you know, I'm, lifting a weight. So now I got a supplement. What about that? It's not an absolute necessary thing. Um, I personally do use protein after I work out, but part of that's just because right after I work out, I don't want to, I don't feel like eating anything. Um, we should get something in our system within 30 minutes, um, in the, in the matter of like protein and carbohydrates. And so for a lot of people, it's just easier to use some sort of protein supplement. Um, just so they can get that in their system faster, um, especially if they don't feel like eating after an intense workout. The two I do always recommend to athletes though, and this is just for um, keeping the um, inflammation under control as well as just protecting their um, soft tissues, is turmeric and collagen. The turmeric helps with inflammation, so it helps um, just decrease overall inflammation in the body, keeps down muscle soreness, keeps down pain. And uh, collagen is just really good for all of our soft tissue. So it keeps our tendons, ligaments, cartilage, um, everything nice and strong. Nice. And you talking about like the collagen, kind of like the, just to kind of add to shakes or whatever, is it powdered or just capsule or? Yeah, powder form typically is what it's going to come in. And most times it's flavorless. And so um, you can add it to coffee even. I put it in my smoothies in the morning. You can pretty much add it to almost anything because it's there's really no flavor to it. Okay. Oh, awesome sauce. Nice. And so, um, gosh, you're good. You're so efficient. You went through like all my questions, all my major questions I had for my mom. I'm like, hmm, she touched all those points already. <laughs> now, as far as... Um, a lot of the times I talk to women too about being mindful. You know, we see a lot of the the athletes on like the CrossFit games, or we see like a lot of these different, you know, challenges, the ninja challenge and whatever else there, there is out there. And, you know, people are going into the gym and they're like, I can't do that. There is this huge push, you know, between that and then the whole body conscious image, um, that a lot of people have, you know, I usually will tell a lot of my moms, listen, you just carried a child. You just did something most miraculous. It took you almost a year. Allow your body, love your body. This is a time, especially postpartum, to love on your body and to really, really try to just take your time to, to heal and to kind of restore. And if when you do start um, return to fitness, then you really just want to you know, gradually grow, increase, improve, not necessarily look at everything else that's going on there. And I would always say, you know, you might be lifting your one rep max is like, you know, 150 and somebody else's is like 300. 
you know, that's, you know, that's good for them. If that's where they are and this is where you are, that's fine. But just kind of have, you know, some goals or a plan. So what are, what are some of the things that you tell your athletes, you know, at varying stages who may be kind of like, well, you know, am I doing this right? Is this really working for me? And, you know, things of that, especially if they kind of, you know, they tend to look to others kind of because that's where they feel they should be. Yeah, it's so easy to want to compare yourself to other people. And you really just have to remember, um, you know, ultimately you're only competing against yourself and looking to make yourself better than you were yesterday. Um, you know, I know there's athletes that I work out with that they can beat me any day on certain lifts, but then I can beat them any day in, you know, certain other workouts. And so we all have our, have our strengths and weaknesses and, you know, we really want to excel at our strengths, but we also want to work to improve whatever our weaknesses are in those skills. And it's just a matter of just thinking about where were you yesterday? Where were you five months ago? Where were you a year ago? And just really looking at your progress and appreciating that progress, not getting, not letting yourself get frustrated that you aren't where those other people are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's so key for a lot of women because we we've gotten to the point in society too, especially for postpartum. Like we were like, this is what you need to look like after you have a kid. And so everybody is like, yes, this is where I need to be. And it's like, no, you need to be where you are. And then you need to transition slowly and you need to just, you will get wherever you want to get, but just, you know, pace yourself, you know, you don't have to kind of look at everybody that's out there. And, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of just kind of really appreciating where you are, like you said, and just, you know, set some goals. If you need to set goals, if you need to kind of say, okay, this is where I would like to be and just kind of work towards that, but not feel like there is this one size fits all kind of for everybody. So I absolutely appreciate that. So Brie, if we need to find you, if all my patients decide that they want to do CrossFit and they want to talk to like the most amazing CrossFit coach that there is out there, cause she really, people, she really is awesome. Um, you should see her like working out. She's super awesome. Um, <laughs> where, where would they find you? Yeah, I can be found on Facebook at either get your fixed physical therapy or get your fixed nutrition. Those are my, both my businesses. Um, and then same thing on Instagram. You can find me at get your fix PT and get your fixed nutrition. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, I know there are a lot of people out there who are going to appreciate this, um, you know, just moms in general, because a lot of people keep asking me like, is CrossFit safe? I'm like, yes. I heard you get injured doing CrossFit. I'm like, you can walk to your mailbox and sprain your ankle. It's no worse than that. <laughs> you know, right? Sprain your, and they're like, well, you just say that because you do it. Well, no, I'm saying that because it's true. So just kind of letting people know, you know, that it is safe and, you know, especially that whole scaling bit, you can scale and you can kind of work up to your tolerance and, and you know, get to the level you want to get to. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. Guys, she's awesome. Seriously, get your fixed nutrition and get your fixed PT. She's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Bree. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Awesome. Thank you.